<clears throat> All right, here I got a Russ Wynn challenge lock. This is made by Hippo. I got this from uh, Red Eye in a trade. So we'll take a look at this. Works well. Nice tailpiece. Somewhat restricted keyway. I can work off of this ledge here. Okay. I'm going to use top of the keyway tension and a uh, gem. Really crunchy in there. All right, all right. I'm gonna leave that guy for later. I'm just gonna adjust the camera. Okay. Got a pretty good full set. Getting a lot of counter rotation from pin one. Try to turn it back a little bit. Not sure what happened. I just want to make sure all these pins are free. Kind of binding up a little bit. Alright, still works. Alright, let's try again. I'm going to switch over to a deeper hook in uh, 18 thousandths. Alright, making good progress. They have a really deep fall set. So I think I'm just waiting on maybe one more pin. It might be pin one. Let me just double check. Sure. Alright, don't worry. Let's 
destroy that pick. Right, this guy just doesn't want to go. Another counter rotation. Let me see if it might be something else. Looks out of pin f five, pin four. All right, see now I'm back where I was at before, with my super deep false set. I think there's a, there should be only maybe one pin holding me up. There we go. Now that's a tough lock. I think I'm gonna use a shim to avoid losing anything. We're getting stuck. Okay. All right, so I'm going to use the key. That's what it looks like. I think I need to shim this actually because there's there isn't any gap there. I do need to use the larger follower because of uh, the brand, I believe. Usually you need a longer or a larger follower for a wrestling. But it looks like that one's too big. Let me try again. Yeah, just a little too big. I'm not sure why. Alright, so I gotta use this, uh... All types of weird stuff going on in there. Okay. So... <laughs> wow, chamber three is really, uh, drilled out there. And then there's holes next to, uh, chamber six. I think for bearings, or for like a construction type lock. Alright, so let's take out these key pins. Okay, so, uh... So chamber three is crazy looking, two is threaded, and five is counter milled. And then this is where I guess the uh, either, I'm not sure why well, there's two of these, might be just, I'm not sure why that's there. Usually you'll have some ball bearings on one side or the other, so if it's used in a construction site, they'll drop through. Okay, so that was that.
standard key pins, except for maybe number one. Okay, got a homemade pin, homemade. That's a T pin. Here's the wafer for the top. That's a drunken spool. Okay. Don't lost that one. I think this is another drunken spool. Different types of springs. Some of them, I think, are worn out. That's made from a key pin. Okay, I think that's it. And then, uh, a bunch of different springs. I think there's a different spring in each chamber. This one is... Not for a lock. I'm not sure what that's from. Something else. It's very small compared to the others. And um, it's not from any type of padlock that I know. Or from any kind of smaller core. Alright, so... Yeah, number three kept getting caught up in in here, like so, I'm kind of uh, getting wedged in sideways. Uh, that's very unique, I've never seen anything like that. Well done. And uh, chamber five has a pretty sharp, right here on this, the second, uh, the second piece here that was getting caught pretty well the bottom not so much okay very cool lock uh, let me just see the Bible real quick the Bible standard doesn't look like that's been opened okay yeah that's all standard all right uh, this was a great lock. Hip-hoo. Alright, thanks for the lock, thanks for watching, and uh, happy picking.